In this tutorial, we will explain the Clipping Mask tool and its implementation in vector design. In other words, the Clipping Mask tool uses the shape on the topmost layer to define visible area for the entire group. We'll begin with creating a triangle using the Polygon tool with sides count set to 3. Then apply the Expand command and set strokes to 12 points. Now we add a square in the way that it overlaps and covers the triangle's peak, and add white color fill to the square. Since the triangle is going to be used as a mask, we should place it over other objects. This can be done in the Layers panel by placing the triangle item above the square. In order to apply a mask to objects, we select the mask together with those objects, and then tap on Make Clipping Mask on the Path tab of the inspector. This command creates a clip group that includes the original objects. The object from which the mask was created is always the upper item in the clip group. Finally, we activate the fill and stroke properties to make the mask outline visible in the design. Let's step back for a moment. We could use an alternative way to create a clipping group. It is convenient for grouping just a few objects. So to create a clipping group, we drag a rectangle in the Layers panel and drop it onto the triangle. The rectangle is now masked by the triangle. You can see that the new clipping group differs from what we created using the menu command. The fill and stroke properties of the mask did not disappear. They also changed their order if compared with the original objects. The stroke of the mask appears now in front of the masked object. At the same time, the fill of the mask is behind everything else in the group. This method is quite flexible. The Layers panel allows adding more objects to the group by dragging them into the group. This works in both directions. We can drag the line out of the group, which is equivalent to ungrouping. The Layers panel supports adding and removing objects with two other group types, the regular groups and compound groups. Now we're getting back to our design. To create the snow cap, Let's turn the bottom of the square into a wavy line. To do that, we add a couple of anchor points to the square. Then switch to the Convert Anchor Point tool to pull and adjust direction lines. Two more mountains can be created in the same way. To add the sun, we'll use the Ellipse tool. And for clouds, we will use the Line tool. With the help of the Pen tool, let's draw a hill and place it at the foot of the mountains covering them. The final step would be fitting the whole mountain scenery into a circle. For this, draw a circle with the ellipse tool, holding down one finger to constrain it to a circle. Since the circle is going to become our new clipping mask, we need to place it in front of the other objects. To do this, open the Arrange tab of the inspector and apply the corresponding command in the lower section of the tab. The same can be done by dragging the circle to the upper position in the Layers panel, as we did before. Now we adjust the position of the circle so that it outlines our mountains. To clip the whole design with the circle, we select all of the objects using the Select All command from the menu, and then apply the Make Clipping Mask command on the Path tab of the inspector. The whole design is now presented as a clip group in the Layers panel. To have a nice outline around our image, we need to apply a stroke to that circle. Now we can add a background to complete the art. Note that the best thing about Clipping Mask is that you can at any time move, edit, modify objects inside the mask and the mask itself. Simply select the necessary object with the Select tool and work with it. Go on, experiment with the Clipping Mask option yourself to get a hold of the workflow.